I'm Shane McGowey. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Hourlings Podcast Project. Tonight, Shay's going to be leading the discussion. Shay, take it away. All right, you guys, we got a fun episode tonight. We're going to be talking about the top 10 websites for authors that we find to be really handy. Uh, some of these websites are going to be major staples that every author should be familiar with and will probably have be in contact with uh, throughout their career. And other websites we're, we're going to mention might be a bit surprising. Uh, we'll mention a website that you'd be like, huh, what does an author need to go to that website for? And we'll have a twist for you as to why we think it is a handy website. So the way we're going to do this is uh, Marty and Dave both selected their, their top three, and they'll explain it, explain it to us. I selected four to round it out to 10, and we're just going around about. Yeah, fun. before before we start, yep. I, I'm going to mention uh, Kindle Direct Publishing, K, kdp.amazon.com, um, ingramspark.com, that's where I draw all my hardcovers, and acx.com, that's where um, all my Audible editions get created. But those aren't my picks tonight. Oh, okay. Um, so <laughs> the, the, um, my picks are going to be more esoteric for very... Uh, um, small, much smaller matters that'll drive you crazy if you. If well, you don't listen have here, Marty. You know, you threw me the bus, so I get to do whatever I want now. And I have decided, in all my power, that we will first discuss these three websites, and then we will do our roundabout because I think they're important. And maybe there are some viewers who don't know of them, and that's fine. And I think we should we should walk them through it. So let's start with uh, KDP. You want to start yes. with that? All right. KDP.amazon.com. This is Kindle Direct Publishing. Uh, this is where you go when you have a finished novel that you actually like to self-publish. Um, Kindle Direct Publishing allows you to publish in Kindle, paperback, and now they are offering hardcover editions. Um, so that's where, where you would go for that. Um, IngramSpark.com, um, that's where I go for hardcover editions. It's worthy to note that they also can do uh, ebook editions, paperback editions, as well as hardcovers. And the advantage there is if you want to go wide as a published author, um, it's a good um, service to actually do that. Um, that's a whole different episode talking about what going wide is. And, and the last one that I mentioned is acx.com. That is the uh, website and the facility that um, authors use to create uh, audiobooks that are published to Audible. Um, I love audiobooks. All my, all my novels are in audio, and I am currently accepting auditions for my most recent novel. I love it. It's really, it's really a lot of fun to do. So we will call these three websites the Holy Trinity of indie authors. Um, so please take note. Uh, I definitely, I haven't used ACX yet, but I would like to. It sounds like a great, uh, a great next chapter for, for some of my indie books. Um, KDP and Ingram Spark, of course, I use. Um, they, the price points for author copies, hardcovers are about, for my, in my situation anyway, about $10 for an author copy and uh, for, at Ingram Spark. And then for KDP, you know, two, three dollars or something like that. Um, and then you can resell them, but uh, they're just a great platform to, to get your book published online uh, and have people start, you know, start, start buying it, uh, actually do the thing, press the button, put it out there, that's what they're for. So um, Holy Trinity, take note. Now we're going to go into the, maybe the ones that are a little more surprising or that, uh, that work for us personally that you may not have heard of. Uh, so I'll get us started then on, on my first pick. My first pick is Dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T. And this is a website that has thousands of font choices that you can type in uh, a phrase and see how it looks in all different fonts. Now, I, I have a bit of a pet peeve with font, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think font really means the way a, a word looks. It means the size of the word, right? Isn't typesetting the way a word ac actually looks? No. Like the typesetting of- The font is the shape of the letters. Yeah. And what and what's the, what is the size then? Point size. Hmm. I'll, I'll come back to you on that. I think I might have heard some some controversy. Uh, but but this is a, it's definitely a, the shape of the letters. There's people who who make their living um, designing uh, fonts. 
Um, and in fact, probably the biggest thing you have to watch out for on, on the site you're talking about is whether the fonts are free or, or uh, available for commercial use. Okay, well, if I find the controversial uh, thread that I was reading online, we'll post that in the, in the blog, in the description as well. Um, but this is a great website for, for just testing out, you know, your cover font, your, uh, your branding font. It's just fun. It's super fun to go through Celtic fonts and uh, courier fonts and theater fonts and sci-fi fonts and all that stuff. So, um, and they're usually, most of them are free. I don't know if there's a premium uh, option on the font, but everyone I've gotten there is free. Um, and yeah, so I love to use it. It inspires me. That's my first pick. Dave, what's your first pick? Uh, my first pick, uh, well, there's this author out there named Martin Wilsey, who actually has a blog post on cover resources, uh, places where you can buy covers, uh, places uh, where you can look for free covers, free artwork, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I find it to be a very useful resource, um, and I'm, I have no problems recommending it because I reference it so often. Uh, so it's his cover resources blog post. Um, and I will make sure that we put the, the link in the, uh, the comments for this episode. All right. It'll be Thank easy you. for me to remember that that one is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Marty, what do you got for us? All right, my first one is a very handy dandy thing. Um, it's a website called prolificpress.com. And on this uh, website, you can actually take your ISBN number, enter it into this form, along with the price of the book that you want to publish, and it will generate for free a barcode to go onto the back of your cover. Um, it's, it's a really great free service. Um, there's a lot of services that will charge you for a barcode. Many people are not aware that you can get barcodes generated for free. Um, so it's a great money saver and super easy to use. Nice. I like these. They're two solid, solid websites so far. Um, all right, I'll hit you with my next one. This one might be a bit of a twist. You might say, well, what does an author need to go here for? Um, Pinterest. Pinterest is not just for planning your wedding. Um, I like to go to Pinterest to see artwork of uh, sci-fi, fantasy, there's some great digital artists on Pinterest um, and just going through them inspires me uh, as well as travel photos, places, really mysterious, awesome places in the world, uh, photography, stuff like that gets my imagination going. And so when I need a little burst of it, I just go to Pinterest and I have a little board and I'll just scroll through. So I, I love doing that. That is a, that's my next recommendation. Yeah, I actually use Pinterest a lot too, every yeah. day. And yes. I, have, I have lots of boards on mine for various topics that I use for inspiration. Everything from science fiction vehicles to spaceships and space stations to characters. And um, I, it's very easy to use. And um, it, like you, it's very inspiring. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like it as well. Uh, I've started using it a bit more for uh, collecting the, the art that I like. Uh, but I also have gotten a number of covers off of uh, Pinterest. Uh, it's led me to authors who were, uh, not authors, artists uh, who I was able to get personal contact information for and then buy cover art off of them. Great. Very good. Excellent. All right, Dave, what's your next one? Uh, my next one is called The Submission Grinder. Uh, I tend to write uh, some short stories and quite a few novelettes. And so finding a market for them uh, is, you know, and getting paid for them uh, before, eventually before I solo publish them is something that I'm, I'm keen to do. So the submission grinder is uh, actually a clearinghouse. It, uh, it lists markets uh, that are accepting um, short fiction. Uh, and it's constantly updated. Um, and I've even used uh, it to advertise um, some of my own anthologies up there uh, when I produce anthologies. So it's a, it's a good general uh, um, site. Uh, and unlike some of the other ones out there that do the same thing, it's free. I love free. We love free. We love free. All right, Marty, is, yours, is your next one free? My next one's free. Right, uh, my next one is randomnamegenerator.info. Mm. Uh, what this one does, I, you know, I write so many characters all the time because I, I, I write so much 
my my character library has got like a thousand people in it already. So in an effort to not reuse the same name in different stories or forget who my names were, I used this random name generator to help me um, pick pick names that um, are uh, germane to what I'm writing. And, um, you know, it has some radio buttons in there that you can uh, tweak, you know, do you want male, do you want female, do you want it to be a common name or a rarer name, things like that. And it's just very handy. You just press the button, poof, it gives you 10 names. And um, you hit the button again, you get 10 more names. And so you can mix, mix and match. Um, I use it a lot because I suck at names. And I usually pick names that have very unique spelling, especially when I start. Because by the time I'm done writing a book, I usually end up changing at least one character's name. And it's easier <laughs> with search and replace if the name's unique. Yeah, that's kind of like an automated baby book. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, there there is a ton of um, name generators out there for fantasy yeah. writing, for you know RPGs, for characters, all kinds of stuff. Steampunk, yeah. all kinds of... Uh, themes of stories there's a metric ton of uh, uh, ways to do it which is much more easy than how I used to do it I used to get names by wandering through graveyards and pulling them off of tombstones wow and uh, um, that was a lot easier I, I kind of like your method it's not as uh, not as fast but it's easy because you just take your phone you take a photo of a name you find interesting I kind of like your, you your have a story later. I kind of like your first method better. They're going around walking around in gravestones. That's pretty cool. Uh, I will say, yeah, but that's not a website. Uh, that's true. Although there is a website called Find a Grave, hmm. where you can see all the names you want. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, when I use um, name generators, uh, usually I try to if I find if I fall on one that I like, I might try to tweak it a little bit just in case another author out there falls upon the same one. So uh, maybe I'll keep most syllables and just change a letter or change a spelling or something like that. But um, I know there's so many options that the odds of that happening and I'm actually using, this, using the name in a story that actually gets out there are low, but I still like to be as unique as possible. So um, I'm a name hoarder. Yeah. If I come across a good name or if I think of a good name, I'm like, oh, that's a good name for a character. I'll write it down. I'm liking yeah, this. Uh, I have a file on my phone that just says names. And yeah. it holds names like that. It, uh, I have in my notebook uh, uh, names lists. And I also maintain a spreadsheet of potential names for uh, people, characters. I, I like also have a list is. for another spreadsheet for titles of books. Um, if I think of a good title, I've done I can that. write that down. Never know it will come in handy. I like this um, split theme we have here. Our, our websites seem to be either highly practical, like publishing platforms, or inspiration. And I think that's I think those are two really strong. It's a strong duality for uh, for our choices. So my, my next choice uh, is another twist for you. Um, I've chosen Fiverr with two R's at the end as my next handy website. This is a website where you can hire artists, uh, skilled people of all kinds to create things for you or help you do things for around $5, sometimes more. Um, but it's great for, for me, I use it just to brush up a logo that I may have created on paint, brush it up so, so it's professional looking, put it on my website. It's not for big things. You probably wouldn't find, I, I would be very surprised if you found a uh, quality cover artist designer willing to do stuff like that for you for just five bucks. But for little things, um, fixing up, you know, once you once you get an expensive cover, if you realize, oh, there's a little change here that I need and you can't get a hold of the other artist, you know, just they can do stuff like that for you, get you the right files, get you vector files, get you uh, all sorts of different stuff. So I but, use Fiverr for little, little things that I need a professional touch for in my website and my books. I'm uh, actually I recommend it. I'm actually planning on using them for some small things like uh, uh, something else that they're good at is if you have a map that you need to have in your fantasy story, mm -hmm. uh, they're very good at things like that. Um, taking a map and turning it into like a professional, yeah. um, a professional illustration. Yes. Uh, they're excellent at stuff like that. Definitely. 
I, I think I think Fiverr works best when you come to them with something, like you're saying, Dave. I come to them with your your draft of the map. I came to them like with a a widow version of my logo. Uh, I think that you're going to get better results in that regards. Um, but hey, I mean, you might find some really collaborative and creative artists that can just brainstorm with you and come up with what you need. Yeah, but I have uh, two of my covers have images on them that were created by um, folks at Fiverr. Totally. So yeah, so that's my recommendation. We're going around again, right? Or yes. did you guys choose all your three? No, I, I lost track. Of, we're going around. Going around one more time. Okay, good. Math was not never my strong suit. Uh, Dave, let's let's hear your last one. All right, uh, my my next one sounds minor, but it's not, uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, it's called the uh, Book Description Formatter from Kindlepreneur, uh, and the reason it exists is to allow you to get properly formatted um, text um, for your descriptions of your books on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble, and on Kobo. Uh, Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble obviously both have uh, you know both eBooks and uh, print books. Uh, Kobo is your international sales for, for eBooks. Um, and it's very difficult to get descriptions properly formatted um, for some of these sites. And the thing about it is, the first thing somebody sees is, your, is the thumbnail of your cover. And then if they click on it, they see your text, your blurb about your book. And if it's not formatted properly, you may have lost the sale right there. So it seems minor, but it's one of those things it's just much more relaxing to be able to go make sure my description is formatted and paste it into the description box on the, on the relevant website. It seems small, but it's not. Small things add up, man. That, that makes you more professional. I like it. Good one. Uh, Marty, what's your last one? My last one is a website called bookbrush.com. And what this site is for specifically, it's for any authors who want to be able to do a lot of different things, everything from creating marketing ads um, to banners for your uh, Facebook pages or your blogs or, or your personal websites. It, it can allow you to create covers for um, standard um, books for Amazon and other uh, uh, vendors. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I really enjoy the uh, marketing ads that you can generate with it. They can do very, very beautifully 3D rendered editions of your book, you know, sitting on a shelf or, you know, in a beautiful woman's lap at the beach or, you know, in a, in a Kindle or in, in your phone or in lots of different ways. So it's really great for making marketing materials as well as if you wanted to uh, make your own covers, you can make your own covers in there. Um, yeah, it now has seen... new features I haven't tried yet for making advertising videos. Mm. You know the little uh, book trailers. I'm gonna. I've I've paid people in the past to do book trailers. I'm gonna try making some myself. So it's a it's a great website. Uh, check it out. Yeah, Marty, I've seen you use that with your books, and it, it looks super awesome. So I'm, I'm definitely supportive. I have a confession to make. Oh, I can't wait. I, I subscribed to it uh, relatively recently and have not had a chance to even try it out yet. So, Marty, wow. I, may come in, I may be coming to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no problem. I mean, I'm a yeah. whiz in there now. Jeez, I must have 200 projects in there now. And it's, it's great. I love that thing. All in right, fact, because... just today I was in there making, um, uh, taking one of my Kindle covers and converting it to a square Audible um, cover. Mm. So you don't have to pay extra to a cover designer to generate a square one. It's, uh, it's a really super handy tool. So uh, I get to have an extra fourth to round this out to 10. Um, and it was going to be Abe Books, A-B-E Books, which is a book vendor of really cheap books. And I was going to talk about how important it is to be well-read and get all your books for, for cheap. But I realized we didn't bring up MailChimp. So I think I'm going to have, to have MailChimp be my, 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 third, my fourth one, um, which is a great website for creating mailing lists and contacting your readers and your buyers. Um, I'm, I'm not super great at this yet, 
I, I really have not mastered, you know, we can all grumble about marketing. I know it's, it's, a, it's a difficult part of uh, being an author, but um, I, I think MailChimp is a great way uh, to, to keep in touch with a fan base. And I want to start being better at collecting, you know, sign up for my mailing list when I go to, to uh, book signings and collecting that, that base. So I have uh, something to, to, a foundation for which to market my next books and, and progress through my career. What do you guys think about MailChimp? I use it. Love it. I, su I subscribe. I, I have it. Um, I use it to power my very small newsletter, which I'm hoping uh, my membership will, will grow. Uh, it would probably help if I remembered to uh, actually take signups uh, at, at my selling events. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't exploit it enough. I am uh, not nowhere close to the uh, 2000 limit for uh, the paid version. Um, so uh, we could do a whole I, episode I, I on be better about lists. what's that? We could do a whole episode on mailing lists. Yeah, we could. Yes. Happen to do it, what to say. We'll put, we'll put it on our list. I uh, the freebies you can uh, associate with uh, hey, sign up for my mailing list and you get some free crap. All right, you guys, well, to, to uh, redeem myself, I know everyone was just waiting with anticipation for me to find what I was talking about before. I must do this. I have found the website, and I'll put it in the link. No fighting, but according to this website, and I said typesetting, but it's typeface. A typeface, according to this website, is the design of the characters, and therefore Times New Roman is a typeface. But fonts are the weight, style, size, and effect of a typeface. So Times New Roman bold, Times New Roman, you know, oblique or all these different things are fonts in the in the family of the typeface. So redeemed as far as this website goes. We'll put it, we'll put it down there. No fighting. I know everyone's very hey, good luck buying typefaces. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll be first in line. I, and yeah. no one else will be there. And I can you, get you may be uh, you may be strategically correct, uh, but I, I think the, the the public out there. Uh, is not Dave, that way. I feel vindicated, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. Anyway, this has been really fun. Uh, we promise to put the links in the description uh, so you can check it out yourself. We hope that these websites are handy to you. And uh, drop a few more if you think we missed some good ones. I think that's it. You got you got 14 websites. We only said 10. You got 14. Good deal, huh? Over and out. Already then. All right. All right. See you. Okay, guys. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Yeah.